What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel yet again. Here we are to continue drawing this Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. Today we are going to focus mainly on gradient mesh. Now this was my very first time using gradient mesh as normally most of my illustrations consist of layering flat colors on top of one another. Uh, I'm familiar with regular gradient but I had never used gradient mesh before and it turned out that it was exactly what I was looking for for this particular illustration. So here you can see I'm trying a multiple different types of gradients uh, between linear gradient and a radial gradient and it just wasn't working out for me. So here you can see I'm adding gradient mesh and by doing that I select the shape that I wish to apply the gradient mesh to and I simply go up to my top menu and choose object create gradient mesh there it'll pop up a dialog box which you saw quickly there that'll allow you to choose how many rows and columns you want now this being my first attempt at this i noticed that by default everything comes in as black and white so as i'm going to change each one of these uh, points of color I have to go into my color dialog box and select RGB. Um, later I found out that this isn't always the case and I can use my eyedropper tool just like normal to pick up other colors. So here I'm trying to get the color right here in this circle to match with the line that I've already drawn. So I'm going in using my direct selection tool or white arrow tool and selecting each one of the points within this table of colors, so to speak. I individually change each color to match what I'm trying, what I'm trying to show. So at the top, you see a little bit of a shadow and at the bottom, you the bottom back, you're seeing a little bit of a shadow, but it's a little bit too dark for me. So I'm going to go back through and make sure that all the points have been converted to RGB and using my color sliders. I'll pick I'll select a point and then adjust that color accordingly. It's a long and arduous process, um, but again, this was my very first time using it and I learned a lot. Uh, so here you can see I'm using that direct selection tool to just adjust the points a little bit, make sure the shape that I'm trying to uh, colorize here is on point and lines up with the rest of them. So Every time I need to make an adjustment, I select that point. I change it from grayscale to RGB and then select the color that's needed. And that's looking a little bit better. You're starting to get, uh, really showcase the, the hips of this car, if you will, that rear quarter panel that just couldn't be done using a linear or a radial gradient. So you can see how you can also click, hold, and drag these points accordingly. Um, but I try not to like mess it up too much. I feel like the computer generates a pretty good shape uh, depending on what I need. So I'm just kind of going with the flow here and making minor adjustments, just playing around with all of these points to see if I can't get the color to be just right. So here, as you can see above the window, I want a little bit of a shadow on top, but I really want to showcase that red too. So I've adjusted some of the points to move some of that color around. I will say that while working with gradient mesh, I really felt as though I was painting or smearing the paint around on the car. So here, I want to just catch up and uh, draw a few extra shapes that are needed. This is the uh, reflection from the street, so there will be no gradient here. But I'm just filling in a few more of the details uh, before moving forward to the next, uh, the next shape that will require gradient mesh. You can also see here that I've added some of that purple color in. Um, and use that same purple color for the roof there so it all kind of seamlessly blends together. Now I'm going to knock out the details 
on the rear side here, the uh, next to the rear window, using that eyedropper tool again to pick up the same color, using a gradient, and just trying to make sure those little highlights pop. Zooming real far in again, using that direct selection tool to really refine that path that we've drawn and make sure that it's uh, exactly what we're, we're looking for. All right, that's starting to look really good. So now, now you can tell I'm kind of excited and I wanna you know move forward and create more of this gradient mesh because the body panels are really starting to come together and um, showcase the different depth and shape that you can get by just using a gradient. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through and add a few more details of areas where I already have started drawing so that I can kind of check those off the list and not really come back to them if I have to. So before I move on to the rear bumper and the taillights, I wanna make sure that these details like the gas tank and these other shadows are in and drawn because I do have a tendency to forget sometimes, especially like door handles. Those are some, those are the last thing I always do and sometimes I do forget. So before I move too far, I wanted to get a few of those details knocked out. And then I go back and wanna mess with the gradient mesh again. So I just wanna adjust the colors to make sure that I'm getting the best use out of this feature as I can. Okay, so this shape here, on the, uh, not this shape, sorry, this shape here on the front, um, I wanted to apply a gradient mesh here. So you can see how in the um, create gradient mesh dialog box, you have many different options. So I'm just trying to go through each one of these options to see what it gives me. And I think this, uh, what I settle on this is really resemble, re resembles what I'd like to do uh, all I need to do now is go in and change the colors. Again, by default, it spits it out in grayscale. So you do need to go back this way and adjust each and every point to be the color that you want, and you will need to convert that to RGB. So every time you select a point, you'll need to go in that little hamburger menu of your color dialog box and change each one of these points from grayscale to RGB, and then change the color of that particular point to match what you're doing, or to match your illustration. So as you can see here, I'm going back through and doing that one by one. It does take a quite a long time. Uh, so this actually, this section of this clip is sped up. You're looking at 600%, but it was so worth it. And again, the more I work on this and the more you work on this, the faster that you will become. That's looking really good. That's really looking like a, a decent body panel on this car. And I really am enjoying using the, the purple more than just a darker variant of red. So again, going into your layers palette and turning on and off that shape uh, helps me to see the colors underneath that I need to adjust. And it's a lot of going back and forth and getting it just right. I think that's what I was hinting at in the last video of, you know, becoming really confident and familiar with your direct selection tool as it's just as important as the pen tool. All right, this is starting to look really good. So let's go ahead and use this same technique for this rear piece that makes up part of the rear bumper. And to apply fill, I use a gradient fill, and I'm trying to see right now if I can get away with using a linear gradient for this shape. And it's just not quite what I envisioned, turning on that, turning on and off the path to see if there's something else that can be done. And as I pull this path away to look at it, I'm just noticing that the, it's just too complicated to, to not use a gradient mesh. So what I'd like to do now is I draw this shadow, a highlight, another highlight, and then now I have some reference points on where I'd like the color of this particular piece 
to kind of mold around these shadow and uh, highlights. So again, going up to Object, Create Gradient Mesh, and I'm going to go ahead and add a few more rows, see if that helps. It's kind of an odd shape right now. It's not picking up exactly like I uh, expected, kind of like that first one on the roof line was almost perfect. So here I used the eyedropper tool to select another area, and that pretty much changed all of those points to that real hot red color. But more importantly, it changed them all to RGB. So by using the eyedropper tool, I've now discovered how much easier it is to go through and select all of these points and just adjust the color instead of having to uh, assign them RGB um, instead of grayscale. So that made things a lot easier and cut down a lot of the time. And now I'm really starting to have a lot more control of where the colors are. And now you can see that by adjusting those colors and kind of smearing those colors around using this gradient mesh, really starting to have uh, this, this rear piece take on this odd shape of, uh, of colors. So you can really start to see the undulations of uh, the, the different the body panel here without having to layer uh, so many different flat colored shapes on top of uh, one another. So in a way, by learning this gradient mesh and having it take me a little more time, it definitely saved me a lot of pen tool time and drawing of these different shapes. So now I want to um, work on this back piece a little bit more and just start by drawing some of these reference points uh, the, of highlights and shadows before I really get into the fill color. And this back piece is really dark. It's, it's in the shade and it definitely adds a lot of contrast to this illustration, making it a lot more interesting if you ask me. I think I can get away with um, just using a linear gradient here if I choose the right colors, because there's going to be some pieces on top of it that will um, kind of distract from the fact that it's just a linear gradient and it's not this complicated gradient mesh. So I'm just going to add a little highlight up here. And by using the same colors that are in each gradient, uh, you can kind of seamlessly blend them together since they are the same color. But I'm just going to use a little, little bit of a linear gradient here just to indicate the highlight on the actual spoiler. And I think that's where we will end today's video. If I went too fast today, please comment below and let me know. Originally this video was slated to be about a half an hour long and I just don't want to bore you guys. I want to make sure you're getting just the stuff that you need. Uh, I will say that I actually have not watched any other YouTube videos on how to create gradient mesh. This is my first time using it and my first time explaining it to you guys without any other preconceived education or, uh, or notions on gradient mesh. This is just from my perspective only. And as always, thanks for watching and hitting that like button. If you're interested in more Adobe Illustrator CC tutorials and other car related nonsense, consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Also, be sure to check out my Instagram and Patreon pages, which are linked below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.